When did you first meet and where? Church. Church. Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> church. church. first interactions when Donovan and Eric were around the same age. Mm -hmm. This actually started when they were seven, eight years old, you know, like really young. We first met the Michels in early 2000. That's how that relationship started to develop. Um, they were right across the street and, you know, kids being kids, you're just out and about and they're running around and we found out at that time that we were attended the same church. I think it was the kids that got together, they got the families together. Yeah. Eric went into the gym and he said, I know that kid right there. I was like, I've seen him in church before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when it became like, okay, I know this dude, like, yeah. When it, when it started, they were like inseparable. And Donovan Mitchell, really, he, he is evolving into the next stage of his career. Yeah, this is the moment they dreamed of, right here, right? Being able to exchange jerseys. Oh, there you go. Oh, boy. Cool with a little attitude. What was your reaction when you found out that Eric was being traded to the Jazz and now teaming up with someone that he considers his best friend and, and they're coming together in Utah in a place that I'm sure you never would have expected? <laughs> Utah. <laughs> Um, when we got the call from his agent, I, it was awesome. To see both of them now playing basketball together was an awesome feeling. Can't describe it. I, every time I talk about it, I become very emotional. Well, there were some rumblings going on um, and, and me and Juan talked about it. I kind of knew it, to be honest with you. You know, I thought about it, I was like, that, that's, there's no way this is gonna happen. I mean, all the things that they've been through together, for them both to end up in Utah, the story, you just keep getting blessings on top of blessings. I can imagine what you see on the court, right? You see them and you're like, oh this. my gosh, yes. Those like are my tears. Two, yeah. When I see them on a the court playing together, I, I'm literally, okay, Nicole, don't do this. You yeah. cry. But no, it's nice that they're together. Yeah. Wow. I may have shed a tear. I know my wife did. Yeah. I know my wife did. <laughs> I like to get to the arena as early as possible, and I get there and I'm in my in my seat, and then I see Juan and Sil coming in. Then all of a sudden, the players come out of the locker room. I'm like, wow, this is unreal. Again, it, is, it goes back to just the story on you know, both of them making the NBA, um, and then both of them being on the same team. That's that's amazing. I couldn't have written it. There's no way. That was a game that was really special. I think we all got out on the court, we took pictures together. And yeah, I might be probably the smallest NBA parent alive, but but I'm standing next to these guys and I was like, I remember when we were all standing on that AAU court together. And that's a picture that I have on my wall of my house right now. And I'm like, wow, the best friends and me, me and Juan who are, who are best friends now. They grew up together. They play AAU ball together. And now they play in professional basketball together. A parent cannot describe that feeling, knowing their history. Beating the Jazz, it's going up top for us, leaves it for oh! Donovan Mitchell. How soon did you guys speak after finding out it was official that you were coming to Utah? Because <laughs> <laughs> that was like, it's yeah. weird for us because we have the same age. We have the same age. Yeah, you have the same age. So, so, yeah. so we know like, everything. So right, it's like, but, I was excited. Like it was just like one of those things where he had been hooping. He had been hooping, you know, in uh, Golden State. I had been here, and you know, it was just one of those things where I was like, man, you know, it'd be cool one day. You know, we didn't yeah. think it would happen this soon. This soon, you know, it'd be one of those things. But you know, one day if we could just we talked play together, it, but we didn't think it would it, happen. And like then the that. opportunity was there, you know, and it worked. And you know, I'm forever thankful. The lifestyle he has now is the lifestyle we did not have uh, when he was younger. So the fact that he wants to give back, it's a sign of who he is. A caring, loving person who wants to give back to those who need. A great heart, he has a big heart. Talk to me about what the Children's Village is and your passion for not only education, but giving back. It's like a home, but it's not the typical home for boys. 
the kids there, something's going on at home mm. where they cannot be there, whether it's the parents or them, and they're there until that situation, whatever it may be, um, resolves itself, and now home is a better place for them to be. Um, so my mother worked there, mm -hmm. and um, so they had housing for the staff members because it was so secluded. I mean, I lived there longer. So, yeah. Yeah, I was there. I just moved my parents out of Children's Village, actually. Really? Oh, because your mom was in the staff housing? Yep. So my mom used to work there. My dad actually used to work there when he was younger too. So that's how they met. But uh, yeah, it changed my life. I mean, I was there every day because we had the basketball court up up the hill. They had to the park down the hill. So I'll just be outside all day. It was like his own little community in a way. Like it it's a long was. drive up a narrow hill, ain't nothing there. Like, and then next thing you know, it's just a bunch of houses. It was like this one little rock where everybody met out in front of his crib. Okay. That played that we played football, football, baseball, tag, yeah, yeah, everything. Like in that one little space. You know how every kid, like every all these kids, all everywhere you go, like everybody has like this one spot where you play. Like mm -hmm. that was probably the one spot we all played. And now you you have young Don and Eric seeing that and wanting to say, you know, wanting to go back and give back to those young men. Kids would come in my office just talking about Don and Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, Hi, Miss Brooks, can we talk? Did you see the game last night? Yes, sweetheart, I saw the game last night. Did you see Eric did this and Donovan did this? I was like, yes, I saw that. Are they coming to campus to see us? Yes, they will come to campus to see you guys. The, the relationship has, has really built, um, not just so much as basketball players, but as family. We're here in Dodds Ferry, which is predominantly white, mm -hmm. and our kids were stuck out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But just having the faith that you you can compete and succeed uh, no matter where you are and no matter who you're competing or, or trying to succeed against. Okay, so Donovan and Eric were the first ever. They were class. part of our, our yep. They yeah. were part of our first group. They are they are our, our founding fathers, as I like to say. They're playing with each other. We realize we're at the same church, mm -hmm. and then now we're going to New York City to the same gym. Mm -hmm. Like our paths just kept crossing. So let's talk about these AAU days, right? Oh. The Westchester boys, right? The Westchester yeah. kids, that was the reputation that you all had. Um, going from Westchester into New York City. What, what is on your mind right now is when I say Westchester kids? What comes to mind immediately? Oh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is our 10 year anniversary of winning a national championship. And when I first met them, I, I, you know, we were, we were striving towards that. That was our goal. Um, and it was a, it was a fun journey. I mean, like, we were just talking about it. Like we used to get out of school, come back and, so we'd carpool, but like I'd have to go to his crib or he'd come to mine uh, and we'd leave. And like, so we'd drive in, we're leaving at 4.30 for a seven o'clock practice and just be stuck in traffic, like just sitting there on the FDR or wherever we was at, the Bronx, wherever, like any any place, we just sit there stuck in traffic. And if we would miss the one, we listen to rap music, old rap music, and if with my mom, it's straight gospel or Beyonce. <laughs> like that was it the whole time. Am I wrong? Yeah. Like that's it. Too. That's all we would listen to. I'll take the kids to practice this week. You take the kids to practice next week. Yeah, it was nice just hearing those two and the car rides down with long. Your mom brought up that there was a certain type of music that you would play that Eric hated. And it was like, <laughs> she didn't know what it was. Was it like, we didn't know if it was no. house music, if it was techno. <laughs> what was the music that would, Donovan would try to play? Yo. The music that he was playing out there today, all the house uh, music. It's grown I wasn't it. playing that today, first of all, but it was a vibe. That's just first and foremost. He was playing it today. It, it was like electric dance music. Ooh. Yeah, it was. Because my dad, my dad, all I listened to was rap. Mm -hmm. That's why I know so much rap today, because of my dad. So I, my had, I had, you know, I had friends who listened to that. And I was into DJing back at the time. Yes. And that's all I wanted to, like, listen to. What's the, what's what's one of these guys' names? Avicii? You know, oh, I know Avicii. Avicii. Yeah, DJ Avicii? Yeah. 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 Okay. Like Marshmello, yeah, like DJ that Mouse, so yeah. like, like, Dead Mouse. I was like, yo, yeah, come on. Like can was... I hear Biggie? Can I hear Z? <laughs> but I would I had both, but like I was like really into that. He would play this. I'm like, oh, I'm sick of this. Yeah, it was um There'll be times I would really put my headphones on. He would okay. put his headphones on, I just play it louder. You know, I would take that time also to kinda like throw tidbits at them. Mm. I'm a teacher, right? Yeah, like what kind of tidbits? Um, life not following people, mm -hmm. keeping, you know, 
staying true to yourself. Like I'm big on that, staying true to yourself. It was just, it was a vibe. And you didn't know in the time how like much you remember those moments mm -hmm. yeah. that you have. And it was, it was just one of those things we just bonded over. Yeah. There were some ups, there were some downs, but they persevered and they ultimately believed in each other and, and they pushed each other. Those two in particular, it was like, anything you can do, I can do better. It's been a great experience to just watch them grow his young boys trying to play the game of basketball to young men right now. We knew that, that together, uh, our kids could be more successful than apart. How would you describe this friendship? It's a brotherhood, my yeah. good brother. Like, what do you mean, that's family. Like, it's yeah. not my friend, that's, them, that's blood. They're brothers. Yeah, they're brothers. They're brothers, that's the best way they are. They are. A blood couldn't make them closer. They love each other. I don't know if they tell each other that, but I know that they do. They love each other and, and, they, and they got a unique bond. Brother. Brother. Like if I had to, if I had a brother, if Jordan, my sister had a brother, it'd be him. Yeah. You know, and vice versa. Yeah, my sisters look at him as a little brother too. Their friendship has lasted the test of time. They could be in different states, they could be on different teams, and they're they're the best of buds, which is which is the greatest feeling in the world. That bond from a childhood friend, you just know like this person has my back. Mm -hmm. We've been through so much together, like so much, like adversity, switching AU teams, facts, switching colleges, Road, switching colleges. Or well, they talk mean to each other, like they're yeah. like, "Bro, why are you here?" I'm like, "Why do y'all talk to each other?" Like, go home. Really? Go home. You been here since six a.m. Oh, what do you think I'm about to do, bro? Go home. Mind your business. Bro. You, you, you confronted me. Go home. Our friends become our chosen family. That's what happened with this relationship with the Mitchells. Your son is playing with my bro. I'm playing with my bro. <laughs> I think it's the best that you have to come for those two. To play AU, to be living 200 feet away from each other at such a young age, and then now at the highest peak of our profession, you know, like to be on the same team is, is, is crazy. As a dad, I just sit back and, you know, my chest sticks out. I'm, I'm very proud of both of them. I'm excited to see where this goes. We still got a lot to go. Yeah. Still, still some time to go. It's not the end of the story. It's far from over. It's far from over.